Uh, Ned Steinberger, welcome to Australian Musician. Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in a, a few things going back. Uh, you're a furniture maker, is your background? Well, actually, uh, when I was a little kid, I, I was into woodworking, 12, 13, and uh, stayed with it all these years. I had no idea when I was at that age that I was uh, developing the building blocks of the work I do now, but that's what happened. and. Uh, I got into furniture making, uh, ultimately into uh, seating, but at, at a certain point I was fortunate enough to run into Stuart Spector. We actually shared a co-op together, woodworking co-op, and I saw what he was doing with the guitars and I said, wow, that looks like fun. And I got involved with Stuart and designed the uh, NS2 for Stuart. And, uh, that led me into the whole concept of a headless base for, for the balance. And uh, now we're here because uh, I, you know, I sold uh, my the Steinberger Sound Company to the to Gibson, and then I uh, got into the boat electric field. So how did you then get into electronics? Well, I'm not an electronics person. Uh, I'm about the structure of the instrument. Uh, started off with conventional uh, magnetic pickups and and circuits that are available. So. I'm not an innovator of electronics, so although uh, my specialty is not electronics, I have gotten involved uh, with the pickup system for our boat electrics because there was no pickup system that satisfied our needs. So that that brought me into this uh, field, which is a you know a transducer electro uh, excuse me a. Uh, um, electromechanical device so that it's not just about electronics but also the mechanical part is very important to figure out how to drive the piezo properly for a bowed sound so that's a, a key feature of our instruments is our own pickup and it actually uh, has a, a system for optimizing the bowed sound and with the flip of a switch you can optimize the pit sound or the pluck sound so it's very important for a bass but it's also utilized through our whole line of cello, violin, and viola. So what's generally the starting point for a new product? The, the way I start to think about a new design? Well, uh, what I like to do is um, understand the basics of the structure, you know, what an instrument has to be, and, and get away from all the the history and uh, the styles and so on that have come before, try to put all that out of my mind and just think about the essence of the instrument. Understand what it is and then build it from scratch so that it's an original instrument, not something which is a, uh, tries to imitate something else, especially in terms of it's being an electric instrument. So many people who make electric instruments have in their mind that the acoustic instrument is the ideal and they try to imitate the acoustic instrument with the electric. This is not my philosophy. I believe that electric instruments should have the opportunity, just like an acoustic instrument, to live their full, to, to their full capacity. And there's so many beautiful things you can do with an electric instrument that are not possible with an acoustic. So I like to explore that new territory and try to give the musician uh, as many options as possible uh, that, are, that are possible with the electric configuration. Uh, and NAM 2019, what are your new releases? As far as at this show here, uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is our new uh, a prototype of an elect uh, of a, an ultralight violin. The, you know, the ergonomics of all these instruments are very important. I believe that a, a, an instrument, of course, in, uh, these instruments are tools, and the ideal tool be becomes part of the person who's using it. So there's. There's no uh, separation between uh, what the artist is looking to do and the performance of the instrument. It all kind of becomes one. And so you want, uh, what I want to do is create an instrument that is as comfortable as possible so that an uh, 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 artist can put their full consciousness and, and uh, have the best experience with the instrument and going to make the best music if they're comfortable and happy. So. Uh, that's a very important part of all my work is to make the instrument fit the body, be comfortable, and obviously to have a great sound and to have a great feel. 
And the other thing too is all these instruments uh, need to look good because this is uh, also part of the expression that you're on stage and uh, you have a certain sense of yourself and the music you're doing, you want your instrument to reflect that. So all these factors are part of how I approach it and I just try to use my imagination to think about the best way to to make all that happen. Of course, uh, everything in life, I guess, or certainly all designs are compromises. You try to find that ideal compromise to get the, the most beautiful result. Do you think it's possible to design the perfect instrument? No. <laughs> Doesn't stop you trying, no. Ah, well, I don't really think of it as designing the perfect instrument. I think of it as designing the instrument that offers the most possible to the artist. You know, the, the most ideal tool that, that fulfills those uh, uh, aspects that we just talked about. So you, you try to find that that way to, exp and of course it's, it's an expression for me. I'm not a musician, but these instruments are what I do, and I try to uh, just create as positive a, a, a presentation as possible, want something that is as comfortable as possible, has the greatest possible sound, uh, has the, and the most versatility. Versatility is very important in my view. For example, our cellos. You can put the cello on a tripod stand so it's self-standing. You can put the, uh, you can take that same cello and uh, bolt an end pin stand to it. Or if you want to stand up, we have something we call the frame strap system, and you can be uh, fully mobile like a, a guitar player. So uh, uh, versatility, I think, is very important. Not only versatility of, of the way the instrument is played, but also tonal versatility. With an acoustic instrument, you have kind of a one kind of tone that it's able to produce. I mean, it, acoustic instrument will sound different when different people play it, but for a given input, the instrument will have a given output. But with an electric instrument, you can play it a certain way and then have all different ways that it can, can uh, uh, sound. Uh, so that's a, a, the versatility is one of the features of an electric instrument that I like to exploit as much as possible. Ned Steinberger, thanks so much for your time. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you.